In general aviation, there are two main types of engines used on small propeller-driven airplanes, the piston engine and the turboprop engine. Now the piston engine is more similar to the engine used in your car because it uses pistons to generate power. And it's the most popular because they're generally low cost and they have a low fuel burn. And this is what they sound like. The second type of engine is the turboprop engine. Now a turboprop engine is basically a jet engine which is linked to a propeller. They're simpler, lighter, and much more powerful than their piston counterparts. And they sound like this. Now the turboprop does come at a higher cost and higher fuel burn, but if you want to turn your airplane into an absolute monster, you give it a turboprop engine. So today we're going to be taking a look at 10 piston airplanes which were converted into turboprop aircraft. With the turboprop engines, they can fly higher, faster, and take off in shorter distances than with their original engine. So let's take a look at some of these beasts. Our first plane on the list is the Beechcraft Bonanza. Originally, the Bonanza is built with a 285 to 310 horsepower piston engine, but with the turboprop, it's upgraded to a 450 horsepower Rolls-Royce or Allison turbine. This plane goes from a rate of climb of less than 1,000 feet per minute to over 2,000 feet per minute. Its cruise increases from 160 knots with the original engine up to just over 200 knots with the turboprop. And with the turboprop, the takeoff distance is shortened from 950 feet down to only about 580 feet. Now this might be the most popular among the turboprop conversions as it takes a great airplane and makes it even better. One of the Bonanza's main competitors is the Cessna 210. Its performance numbers are very similar and in some cases are even slightly better than the Bonanza's. The pressurized Cessna 210 makes a great candidate to convert into a turboprop. The original Cessna 210 was built with a 310 horsepower piston engine and the turboprop conversion uses a 450 horsepower Rolls-Royce turbine. The piston version cruises at a respectable 190 knots and the turboprop silver Eagle cruises at over 215 knots at 16,000 feet. In this case, the top speed only increases slightly with the turboprop, but the rate of climb goes from 900 feet per minute up to 2,200 feet per minute. It also has increased takeoff performance from 1,000 feet down to only 600 feet. The simplicity and reliability of the turboprop makes the Cessna 210 a much safer and more capable aircraft. Perhaps this plane was meant to be a turboprop from the the beginning. Moving back to Beechcraft, number three comes in as the Duke. Originally, the Beechcraft Duke was powered by two turbocharged 380 horsepower Lycoming engines. The Piston Duke cruises at around 215 knots and has a takeoff roll of about 1600 feet. A company called Rocket Engineering took the Duke and gave it two 550 horsepower Pratt & Whitney turboprops, thus turning the plane into the Royal Duke. With the turboprops, the Duke easily climbs at 3500 feet per minute and cruises at over 200 190 knots at standard conditions. The takeoff distance goes from 1500 feet down to only a thousand feet. Also, its landing distance decreases from 2000 feet down to only 900. The Duke makes a perfect candidate for turboprop engines as it has a pressurized cabin and is built with the strength and quality of Beechcraft. Number four has been in the air for over 80 years, and there's still nothing that is quite as utilitarian as the Douglas DC-3. It revolutionized air transport and was the most efficient airliner of its time. Today, to put new life into the DC-3 and the military version called the C-47, many have been converted into turboprop aircraft. The original DC-3 mostly used Pratt & Whitney twin WASP engines, producing 1,200 horsepower each. And when converted to a turboprop, Many DC-3s were given 1,400 horsepower Pratt & Whitney engines. 
With the turboprop engines, the cruise speed increases up to 215 knots, up from the original 170 knots. The conversion also brings a higher useful load of a total of 14,000 pounds. The turboprop DC-3s are becoming a more common sight in rough landscapes like Alaska, Canada, and South America. And with these new engines, there's no end in sight to the airworthiness of the DC-3. Number 5 is an airplane that has been in the air almost as long as the DC-3. The Soviet-designed Antonov An-2 is a single-engine, 12-passenger biplane that has been one of the most successful and popular aircraft since 1947, at least in Soviet era and Russia. The original An-2s were powered by a 9-cylinder, 1,000-horsepower radial engine. Since many are still flying today, they are often upgraded to a 450-horsepower Glushenkov turboprop engine, thus appropriately turning the aircraft into the Antonov AN-3. The piston version cruised at around 100 knots and with the turboprop upgrade, it increased that to 120 knots, with a max speed of 139 knots. The AN-2 was never a speed demon, but the turboprop upgrade cut the takeoff distance and increased the climb rate to 1,000 feet per minute. The useful load is also increased by almost 1,000 pounds to a total of 3,000 970 pounds. The turboprop engine also burns kerosene, which is cheaper and much easier to acquire in the country. The Antonov AN-2 and AN-3 still might be the largest single-engine airplane in the skies today, and the turboprop gives it that extra power to make it such a capable aircraft. So now that we've made it to the middle of the list, I just want to take a second to say like, subscribe, and also check out the Florida Flying merch store for some cool t-shirts kind of like this one. Alrighty, let's continue. Now let's pick up the speed with number six, the Lancer 4P. The Lancer 4P is a kit-built, pressurized four-place airplane. The piston variant has a turbocharged 350 horsepower Continental engine and can operate at altitudes of 24,000 feet. But where the aircraft really shines is with the Walter 601E or the Pratt & Whitney PT6 turboprop engine. The piston Lancer cruises at 220 knots, but when given the seven 750 horsepower turboprop engine, the Lance Air has a typical cruise speed of 325 knots. It also gets to altitude pretty quickly with a climb rate of over 4,000 feet per minute. The turboprop engine gives the Lance Air jet-like performance and turns it into the ultimate personal aircraft. <laughs> While we're on the subject of kit-built aircraft, number seven comes in as the RV-10. Now in this example, this is a one-of-a-kind turboprop conversion, and it's mainly a proof of concept for the PBS TP100 light turboprop engine. There aren't many turboprop engines for light aircraft in the market, but the 241 horsepower TP100 seems to be promising. The piston RV-10 is commonly powered by a 250 horsepower Lycoming IO540 and it cruises at around 170 knots. The turboprop RV-10 sees about the same cruise speed. So where is the plus side with the turboprop engine? The answer is climb rate, fuel type, reliability, and engine weight. The climb rate of the turboprop RV-10 is around 1700 feet per minute, as compared to the 1400 feet per minute of its piston engine. Also, the turboprop TP-100 only weighs 156 pounds, compared to the 380 plus pounds of the Lycoming. This turboprop is a promising engine that will hopefully be in many smaller aircraft in the future. Number 8 is an aircraft that brings us back to the golden age of aviation with the Grumman G21 Goose. The Goose is an amphibious 8-seat twin-engine flying boat. The original Goose uses two 450 horsepower Pratt & Whitney radial engines and it cruises at around 160 knots. Many of the Grumman Gooses, or geese, I guess, were converted to have more modern piston engines and then eventually turboprop engines. The turboprop conversion gave the Goose two 550 horsepower Pratt & Whitney PT6 engines and increased the gross weight by 4,000 pounds to a total of 12,000 pounds. Its cruise speed increased to 200 knots and it has a max range of 1,300 nautical miles. Now this is an airplane that can go fast, carry a lot, and land almost anywhere. 
What happens when you take an airplane that was originally designed for a 135 horsepower piston engine and then give it a 450 horsepower turboprop? Well, you get the one of a kind Impulse Aircraft Pocket Rocket. The Impulse 100 is a German built two seat composite airplane. It was designed to use engines between 100 to 135 horsepower, but apparently this just was not cutting it. The fuselage was strengthened and elongated, tip tanks were added for extra fuel, and the Impulse was given a 450 horsepower Allison turboprop engine. With the turboprop, the Pocket Rocket has some serious performance. The climb rate is 6,200 feet per minute and it cruises at 280 knots. The airplane won't stall as long as power is in. The Pocket Rocket also handles short mountainous strips with ease. And I suggest you take a look at some videos of this airplane because it's really truly amazing and also beautiful. Number 10 is the Polish built Wilga. The Wilga was created to be a rugged, short takeoff and landing four seat airplane. The original Wilgas used an Evchenko radial engine, which produced around 260 horsepower. Later models used the flat Continental 0470 and then the 300 horsepower Lycoming IO540. The piston Wilgas generally take off at around 365 feet and cruise at about 90 knots. But when converted to a 600 horsepower, Walter turboprop like this one, the takeoff distance drops to about 230 feet. But the most notable turboprop Wilga, and probably the most famous aircraft a few years ago, is the 680 horsepower Wilga known as Draco. Built by Mike Patey, the original turboprop Draco was originally a Wilga 2000. Patey also did so many modifications that the registration had to be experimental exhibition, but there's still an original Wilga somewhere in there. Draco could take off in 100 feet and land in about the same. It could also cruise at 156 knots at 18,000 feet and could climb at 4,000 feet per minute. Unfortunately, Draco did have a bit of an incident on takeoff last year. However, Mike Patey has said that he's going to rebuild it one of these days. But Draco will go down as the ultimate bush plane and it's largely due to that amazing turboprop conversion. Now there are a lot of turboprop conversions that didn't make this video. For example, I've seen a Cessna 172, Cessna 206 and 207 turboprop. I've also seen a picture of a Piper Comanche turboprop conversion. And one of my favorite of all time is the Velocity XL with the PBS TP100 turboprop engine. And I've also seen rumors from Velocity Aircraft that they're coming out with a twin turboprop model. So we'll see where that goes. So thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please remember to like, subscribe if you haven't already. Also comment below which airplane you would like to see as a turboprop conversion. Alrighty, until then, blue skies, and I'll see you in the next video.